So have you ever heard that you should be doing the wrist leg to get more power on the forehand? I'll be honest with you. When I was a kid and I was getting caught, I've never hit out that before and I never practiced it in my life. So I was pretty curious when I recorded myself and I wanted really to see if I was really doing this wrist leg because I have no idea if I was doing it because I've never practiced it before. So I recorded myself and I was doing it in absolutely every forehand. So I started thinking, I was like, why do all these players focus so much on the wrist leg when they do it naturally if they have a right technique? So what we're going to be focusing on on this video is we're going to explain you the biomechanics of the wrist leg, um, but we're also tell you how to hit the forehand with the proper technique. So this way the wrist leg comes naturally and you don't need to focus about that by itself. So first thing, what is not the wrist leg? We're not talking about wrist leg whenever we see players, especially on the WTA, that they take the racket all the way back and they break the wrist on purpose until they take the racket all the way here. The wrist leg is a motion that comes naturally from the motion of the arm going forward and the racket dropping backwards. So as soon as I start, I do my back swing and I do my unit turn with my racket up, as soon as I start moving my elbow and my arm forward, starting with my hips, my racket is going to fall backwards naturally. I don't take my racket back and I break my wrist. If you start doing that, you're going to start feeling so much pain on your, on your wrist. If I take the racket back and I bend my wrist backwards on purpose, I, I, I can already feel so much pressure right here on my wrist. So what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up having pain on your wrist and your elbow. So I would definitely not suggest you to do that. So what's the first thing you're going to need to do to, start, to make sure that you have the motion of the wrist leg and you are able to get more power on the forehand is you have a good junior turn. So make sure whenever you do the unit turn, your wrist is relaxed. If your wrist is very tight, it's going to be so hard to get that motion because you're going to see that even when you start the motion forward, the racket is going to follow your wrist because it's too tight. So make sure when you go backwards, you open with the head of the racket up, but the wrist is loose. The wrist needs to be very loose. So open with the head of the racket up, turn, and as soon as you start the motion forward, starting with your legs and with your hip, you're going to see that once the arm follows, the racket is going to drop backwards naturally. And that's what we are talking about, the real wrist lag. So, how, how does it look like when we check on professional players? We see that most of players, once they start the motion forward, the wrist breaks completely and the racket stays behind the wrist right here. It's almost like somebody is pushing from the end of the racket and the, and the arm bends this way. But at the end of the day, they never do it on purpose. That's again, the wrist is so loose and that's why the, it looks like they are bending it backwards but they are doing it in a natural way. That's why it's also so important to get a good racket speed. Now, if you do the motion very slow, you're going to see that it's going to be so hard to get the wrist lag because we don't have enough momentum going forward. So again, another very important thing is getting rhythm on your forehand and getting enough racket and arm speed. So this way the racket is going to fall backwards naturally. Now, there is another very important thing when you work on the wrist lag. So, after you do the unit turn, let's say you open with the head of the racket up, the elbow is far from your body, okay? And you start the motion forward, so you got the wrist like already. But now you need contact with the ball. There are two big problems that we face when, peop when people try to practice this thing. Is First of all, so many people, they hit the ball late, they end up hitting with the wrist is already here back, they don't get the good timing. That's the first problem. And the second problem is that they hit and they kind of slap with your wrist here which is a motion that I wouldn't suggest you at all because the ball is going to end up very flat and it's going to be very hard for you to control the ball. So if you're going to use the wrist, try to use it on this motion to get more topspin. Again, coming from the arm pronation more than the wrist, don't use the wrist. And make sure don't slap the ball with your wrist. You will see that that's when you're going to start hurting your wrist and you won't feel control at all in the ball because you are doing this motion right here. Now, if you feel like you're hitting the ball late when you try to work on your wrist leg, try to time the ball a little bit better and try to think about hitting the ball one second earlier than what you would usually hit the ball. So this way you're going to go a little bit earlier. Maybe the first ball you're going to hit them a little bit too early and the ball is going to go a little bit too much cross court and end up on the side fence, but it's perfectly fine because your body is trying to adjust to the new motion. So as soon as you do a few hitting them a little bit earlier, you will see that you're going to start getting the timing in front of the ball and you will be able to hit them properly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you a few motions on the forehand and you will see that in all of them we're going to get the wrist-like motion with no problem at all on the technique. 
So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you a few examples of how this motion works on a real ball situation. So I'm gonna feed the ball and you will see that as soon as I do the right technique and I start with my arm forward, you're gonna see that the racket stays behind and it feels like I break my wrist, but I don't do it at all. It's just my arm moving forward. So I'm gonna feed the ball and as soon as I start forward, the racket drops behind me. So again, I turn, I go back, and as soon as I start my motion forward, you're gonna see the racket dropping backwards here. And that's what we call the wrist, like here. And that's the way you can get a lot of top spin and a lot of racket speed. So again, make sure when you do that motion, don't slap the ball and bend your wrist here. And make sure you do it naturally. Don't try to force it. As soon as you try to force it, you're gonna start muscling the ball. You're gonna start to, trying to put so much pressure on the wrist and you might get injured. Now, if you like our video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, also check the links below that we have on the comment section. We're going to have a free course launching really soon, so make sure you always check it out.